What's going on, moviegoers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to SeaWorld Productions. You guys, we have so much to discuss in today's video. Today is a big video. Not only that, you guys, we are getting the final trailer for the Marvels later tonight. How excited. I'm hoping that the marketing team can really make a final push for the Marvels because it comes out this week, you guys. This Thursday, the Marvels will be premiering alongside Loki Season 2, the season finale, which I heard is so Kang-centric. Marvel does doesn't know what to do with Jonathan Majors, especially after his trial later this month. But I'm excited. I'm excited for multiple reasons, you guys. I'm excited to see Loki really wrap up this conclusion and how it leads into the more bigger picture of that being the Kang Dynasty. I'm excited for the trailer tonight because I feel like you need to have a massive wow moment in this final trailer. The marketing just hasn't been there. And yes, we are still dealing with the, you know, the SAG after and, you know, the studios still negotiating on this, you know, final offer contract or whatever that they presented. So they really need something. I don't know if Marvel's that desperate where they'll leak something so heavily big in this final trailer, but I am still excited because I will be reacting to it, you guys, later tonight when that trailer drops. But there's just so much goodness to talk about, about Blade. Blade officially has an R rating, you guys. Yes, Mahershala Ali, you guys. It's going to be starring in an R-rated Blade film for Marvel Studios. This is what I've been saying since day one. I've been saying since day one. Whenever they decided to have Blade be introduced into the MCU, they needed him to be R-rated. You are dealing with vampires. It is the horror side of Marvel Comics that really thrives on the R-rating. I mean, why not? It's time to step outside of the boundaries. Marvel Spotlight was officially, officially introduced. And Echo will be the first project coming underneath that banner. For these characters who are more grounded and darker and grittier. Like Deadpool. This is what is going to really help Marvel succeed in the long run. And not, you know, not doing the same formulatic projects. It's time, is that a word, formulatic? <laughs> it's time to really dive deep into something different. And the fact that Blade has officially been announced of being R-rated by the director himself, you guys, is that much more reassuring. He also gives a little bit of a update on Blade as well, which a lot of fans are excited to hear. So let's dive deep into some of this article, you guys, because there's so much to talk about. Kevin Feige possibly leaving Marvel Studios after Avengers Secret Wars, Spider-Man 4 villains rumored, and Chris Evans and Downey coming back for Secret Wars. So much to discuss, but let's dive deep into some of this article talking about Blade the Daywalker. So in an interview with Deadline, Blade director Jan Dimaj confirmed that Marvel Studios gave him the green light for an R rating for the film. Dimaj stated that Marvel gave him the R and the director even described what relief that was to him, saying that it was so important that it achieved that rating. So that's been the main issue, it sounds like, over the course of this project. You know, with the writers leaving, how do you write a Blade film in without that R rating? I mean, it went through so many different writers. It now has Michael Green, the writer of Logan, an R-rated Wolverine movie that is debatably one of the greatest comic book movies of all time. We are in good hands, you guys. Continuing on, the director also talked about how much fun he will, he will have making this film, particularly since... He's working alongside Mahershala Ali, a person that Dimaj described as a deep actor. I mean, come on now. He's won two Academy Awards. It's Mahershala Ali. It is, what's his name from uh, uh, Luke Cage? I'm not Diamondback. Oh my God, I'm completely forgetting his character's name. Cottonmouth. Man, Cottonmouth is one of the best parts of season one, you guys. Damn, I love Luke Cage. Uh, this is what he had to say. I come out with this wanting to be more open more vulnerable, and bring a more personal aspect to my work. But for Blade, we are going to have fun because Mahershala Ali is such a deep actor. Dimaj then went on to tease what fans can expect to see in Blade, specifically stating that Ali's character will display ruthlessness and roughness, which will most likely translate into the violent depiction of the vampire hunter. I'm excited to show a kind of ruthlessness and a roughness he has that allows him to walk the earth in a particular way. I love him for that. He's got a dignity and an integrity, but there is a curiosity that usually keeps under the surface. I want to unleash that and put it on the big screen. 
man, man, yo, just reading this article has me that much more excited for Blade. I mean, the fact that it's now going to be R-rated. You have Mia Goth attached to this project as well. You have Dil uh, Dilroy Lindo attached to this project. Marsha Ali in R-rating, the, you know, the writer of Logan. Things are starting to look a lot better for Blade. Take your time. This film doesn't have to be $200 million. It doesn't. The fact that it's ranging between $100 million, now that you have so much more flexibility with a script that is R rating, to have that little bit more of that authenticity, that's the word of today's video, authenticity, when we're talking with some of these certain Marvel characters. Because when you kind of, when you, when, you, when you do something different, something that's outside of its boundaries, and you, you, you limit these characters to what we can see, and even the writing process as well. So this has me that much more excited, you guys. Thank goodness, Mahersha Ali must be dancing around, super happy that Blade will officially be R-rated. I cannot wait for more tidbits and updates, you guys. That just makes me that much more happier and exciting. But moving on to the next topic, you guys, we gotta talk about it. My Time to Shine Hello is an inside scooper on Twitter and social media. And they, they came out and you know stated a couple of things, some very interesting things, you guys. One in particular is that Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. have already signed on to come back to their roles of Iron Man and Captain America in Avengers Secret Wars. I mean, it's a no-brainer. I mean, from the report stating that Avengers Secret Wars is a culmination and a love letter to all of Marvel, why wouldn't you have Chris Evans and Downey return as Iron Man and, you know, Captain America as different variants? Oh, I, it's, it's, it's that much more exciting. I, I'm so excited to see the culmination of Marvel as a whole, you guys, over the last, what, 25 years. I, it's going to be a sight to see and a goodbye love letter to the legacy characters. And it's rumored that after Secret Wars, there's going to be a soft reboot moving forward, which is very interesting. Moving on to the next topic of Kevin Feige. Now, apparently, Kevin Feige might be leaving Marvel Studios after Avenger Secret Wars. Which, honestly, I'm okay with. Kevin Feige has put all of his efforts into working with Marvel since the earlier X-Men days. He has been since, it's been, what, 23 years? And by the time Secret Wars wraps up, it will be, what, 29 years? Close to 30 years working with these characters that he's loved so dearly. Seeing, you know, Stan Lee's characters and Jack Kirby's characters from page to screen, being adapted to their best possibilities, he's put in the work. He can leave. He can, if he wants to go over there and Marvel, I mean, over at, you know, Lucasfilms and take control of Star Wars like he did with Marvel. But by all means, Kevin Feige, thank you so much. And if that means no more Marvel content after Kevin Feige leaves, after Avengers Secret Wars, then oh well, we've had a great culmination of Marvel projects, you guys. I the, the, the positive always outweigh the bad. Always. And I'm completely okay with Kevin Feige leaving. He's done a wonderful job. And I'm pretty sure if these reports are true, he has somebody already lined up to replace him. Somebody he trusts. So I'm not mad at, at it at all. At all. Kevin Feige, thank you so much. And Kevin Feige, we still trust. <laughs> we still trust. Uh, moving on to the next topic, you guys. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about Spider-Man 4 coming from Daniel RPK, you guys. Apparently, the Vulture, Michael Keaton's The Vulture, is rumored set to appear in Spider-Man 4, you guys. Starring Tom Holland, you know, here's Zendaya, uh, John Watts, rumored to returning to direct the film. Interesting. But I wouldn't be mad. Look, I love Vulture in that first film. Spider-Man Homecoming was still a, such a fun, fun film. For a Spider-Man film, and you know the vultures, you know <laughs> his 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 grittiness towards the end, and his his intimidation skills were so good. I still think back to that ride where he's dropping Peter and his daughter off to the dance, and you know, good old Spider-Man. Oh, it's such a great scene, and I would love to see him return. You know, I just don't know how they're going to tie it into the bigger picture because of how he was in Morbius' universe, and hey, I'm, I'm thinking about putting a team together. And then Morbius is like, oh, I'm interested. <laughs> let's just, let's, 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 let's say that that never happened, right? Because <laughs> I'm not saying Morbius can't be good. Morbius can be wonderful if written better. So let's say John Watts had, you know, the opportunity to, to have um, Morbius, be, you know, be one of the villains in Spider-Man 4, right? 
that makes me that much more happier because Morbius is going to be well written in Spider-Man 4. You know, Morbius as a whole, a whole as a film, you guys, it just, you know, we all know. We all know. Come on now. And hopefully they can actually give Jared Leto some prosthetics to wear instead of, you know, actual CGI because, God. I didn't want to dive deep into that topic, but you know, it's exciting. Spider-Man 4, whenever that decides to start shooting and you know, the script and whatever, I'm hoping that the symbiote is still into play and we really feed off Peter's emotions because he's lost Tony, he lost his Aunt May, he lost his girlfriend, his best friend. He is vulnerable, you guys. And that's when the symbiote takes, takes control completely. And we get to see the symbiote into Secret Wars. You know, there's not going to be one film and, you know, the symbiote's going to come off of him. He's going to be in the church and the bell's going. He's gonna, it's not going to happen. Secret Wars will have Peter in the symbiote suit. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine he interacts with Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man? He's like, you got to take that off. Trust me. I've already had that on me. That symbiote is not good. And Peter's like, no, yeah, I'm not. This, this makes me a better Spider-Man. I <laughs> can definitely reference. If you get that reference, please. Post your comments down below. <laughs> but I'm excited, man. I am so freaking thrilled. I'm pumped. And I can't wait for, you know, most of these projects to come out. But the final topic, guys, we got to talk about. Nia DaCosta, the director of The Marvels, has debunked that variety, you know, article that came out a couple of days ago that really slandered, you know, a lot of, you know, the people of color working for Marvel Studios right now. And I felt, and I was like, oh, oh this is, this is kind of crazy. So, this is what she's had. This is what the article is stating of how she kind of debunked everything. So Nita Costa did not leave the did not leave during the post production process of the Marvels, but instead continued working on the film remotely as she had to be in the UK due to work obligations for her next project. For me personally, it was that they moved the date. They moved the date of the film four different times. They knew the entire time that I had an obligation, a greenlit movie with people who were waiting for me. And I pushed that and then I pushed it again. Then I pushed it again. Eventually, we all knew that if the Marvels pushes again, I'm not going to be in L.A. to do the rest of this in person. By the time I left to start prep on my next film, everyone was clear about what the film was and what we wanted. It really wasn't dramatic sort of thing. People are thinking it is. Makes all the sense in the world. Makes all the sense in the world. The fact that the Marvels kept getting pushed back and she already had these obligations to work on an entirely different project. I understand because when you have these obligations, you have these contracts. They are signed. You have to work on your next project. You can't just be like, okay, I got to push this back. I can't, I can't, you know. I understand that. So I'm glad that Nina Costa came out and debunked that shit. You know, and apparently a lot of people came out and debunked a bunch of those reports uh, coming from Variety. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Now, now I got to really rethink where I get my, 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 my movie news, you know, because if, if they're, if these reports are getting debunked and these are lies and slander, then F off. You know what I mean? It's, that's insane to me. It's insane, you guys. But please stick around, you guys. I'm going to be giving you guys my trailer, final trailer reaction to the Marvel's Later tonight, I'm excited. I can't wait. Post your comments, you guys. Let me know what you guys think about these topics today. Please, let me hear it down below, you guys. And of course, thank you for taking time out of your day for watching SeaWorld Productions. Peace.